Welcome to another issue of Loaded 4x4's 4-Wheel Drive 101. And in this issue, we're going to be talking about when and where one should use a part-time 4-Wheel Drive in 4-Wheel Drive. Riveting viewing, coming right up. It should probably come as no surprise that we get a lot of feedback from our readers and our viewers about four-wheel drive subject matter. So we thought that we'd delve into some basic and some also some advanced four-wheel drive 101, as I'm calling it. And today, I'm looking at part-time four-wheel drives. And to address a, a question that is often asked, and it seems not explained particularly well by the dealers when you go to buy yourself a new four-wheel drive, and that is, what surfaces can I drive a part-time four-wheel drive on? Now, the question came in the other day, David, can I drive my brand new D-Max on a wet bitumen road in high range four-wheel drive? And the simple answer is no, don't do that because you will break the transmission. So I'd like to understand or have you understand how all that works. So in this case, the modern idiom for building a part-time four-wheel drive is to use a selector that looks like this. So back in the day, we used to have a transfer lever, the good old-fashioned analog way of engaging four-wheel drive. Nowadays, we use an electronic activation courtesy of this dial, and it offers up three positions. So there's two in high range, one in two-wheel drive, one in four-wheel drive, give you exactly the same travel speed. One is for bitumen, one is for dirt, and lastly, low range is for your steep and your boggy stuff. So that covers that. If we look at the drive line, We've got here a wheel in each corner, obviously. Again, the modern idiom with a part-time four-wheel drive is to have the front wheels in permanent connect with the front axles and therefore the differential. So every time you drive down the road, all of that component tree is turning over. As we go down towards the back of the vehicle, we've got a front propeller shaft and the first of our two gearboxes. Now this drawing isn't 100% accurate because these Gearboxes should be sitting side by side, but just for the purposes of simplicity, I'll stack them up on top of one another. So we've got the previously mentioned transfer case sitting up on top there, and then we've got the main gearbox. And depending on whether you've got an automatic version with L, which is first gear or low, second, third, D for dumb, sorry, drive, neutral, reverse and park, or a manual, one, two, three, four, five, and six in reverse. Then as we go down the back end, we've got the rear propeller shaft, rear differential, rear axles, and the back wheels. Now, when we're in two-wheel drive, which is our mode for around town, all of the energy goes out through the back wheel. So in two-wheel drive, we have 100% of that vehicle's energy going out through there and there. Now, on a bitumen road, that's A-OK, -okay because with all of the torque exiting those back wheels, we can go down that bitumen road confidently, turn into and out of the corners, no drama at all. But if we stray onto a dirt road, it's a different baby because with all the energy exiting the back, it's a bit like a big old pendulum, this thing, and it's very, very easy to kick the back end out. And that's what causes crashes on dirt roads. So we don't want that. So the way to fix it is to go into high range four wheel drive. So the simple way to do this is as you move from the bitumen road space onto the dirt road space, get the front wheels in the dead ahead direction because we need the front wheel speed to match the back wheel speed. Get off the gas so there's no load on the transmission spin the dial into the 4H position. And what that does is it encourages this front propeller shaft to spin up to the same speed that the back one's traveling at, and it makes a synchronized engagement with that front differential. So now we're in four wheel drive, we've got a 50-50 split of torque across both front and back axles. And the beauty with that is we've now got the front wheels pulling as the back wheels are pushing. So when we go around that next bend on a dirt road, the car doesn't go sideways. So it's incredibly safe in that mode and I would recommend it to you and it's easy as pie to engage. And I should mention that a part-time four-wheel drive will sustain a high range four-wheel drive engagement at speeds up to 100 kilometers an hour. But I don't recommend you do that. You try and keep your speeds down to a more modest 80 kilometers an hour if the road space will support it and that'll help to keep you safe. Now, getting back to this issue about driving on the right surfaces. A part-time four-wheel drive, because of the nature of the driveline, is designed to work on a loose surface. So that's sand, mud, rock, gravel, but not bitumen, concrete, or paving. And the reason for that is this. The job of the differential is manifold, but basically its job, first of all, is to send the energy out to the wheels. So thanks to the clever collection of gears inside that housing, it facilitates that, changes changes the energy from a longitudinal direction out to the side, so that's good. But the really important thing it allows us to do is to change direction. 
So that tells us if we were to go around and say a left hand bend, and I got my tape measure and measured from point A there to point B there, the distance travelled by each of those wheels will be different. So it means that the wheels on the inside radius of the bend have got a lesser distance to travel compared to the wheels on the outside radius of the bend. Now, when we're in two-wheel drive, I mentioned before, all the energy goes out through the back wheels. So on a bitumen road, that's A-OK, -okay, no drama at all. But if we were to hook this up into four-wheel drive and join the front end to the back end, and still drive on a bitumen road, there will be a problem. And the reason for that is that that prop shaft and that prop shaft are now joined and being told to turn over at the same speed. In turn, they are wanting to drive each differential and each axle or drive shaft at the same speed. Now, whilst we're travelling in a straight line, that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. You probably won't notice anything at all. But as soon as the corners start to emerge, then we have this dreaded thing called wind-up emerge. And wind-up is very simply this. As we turn left and we turn right, we've got different wheel inputs. So we've got, let's pick a different colour here. We've got input X, input Y coming together with input Z, and we've got a conflict. So as we turn left and right and these wheels are rotating at different speeds in conflict to that being delivered up by the engine and the gearbox, something's got to give. Now, if the grip underneath the wheels isn't too great, as that tension builds up, it'll get to a point where it's released and it'll spin, and that'll, that'll get rid of the problem, no problem at all. But in this case, where we're on a bitumen road, it just builds up and builds up and builds up until the next sensation you'll notice is dollar signs whizzing around in front of your eyes because you've just broken either the front differential or smashed something in the transfer case and that will cost you significant money. Now, the question was asking earlier about is it possible to drive in full drive on a wet bitumen road? And the simple answer to that is no, because it's the tyre's job to pump that road space dry. And of course, a dry road space means that we've got the same grip levels and therefore the same predicament. We've got this big conundrum, and it means that we run the risk of breaking the transmission. So you simply don't want to do it. So I hope that may have explained that little problem and what to avoid in the future. So simply put, with a part-time four-wheel drive, please don't ever drive it in four-wheel drive on a hard surface. That's bitumen, concrete or pavement. See you next time.